y'all i don't try to tell y'all my story for ever so i'm gonna have to just get in my car and talk about it because sophie won't let me be great she keep bothering me It's a shame that little measly little mutt can terrorize your time. Little measly little mutt. Well, you got to come outside and talk on the phone. And... Hey YouTube, it's your girl Jess Lovely. I'm coming on here today just to talk. I just want to talk. So, um, I've decided that this is going to be a channel where I just talk about my life events and document a few things that go on in my life. It seems like that's what we've been doing here lately. So, today I had a doctor's appointment. At this doctor's appointment, my doctor told me she felt some lumps. So let's talk about it. She felt some lumps. Okay, now we're going to go and start this train back over. In 2004, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. At this time, my mom was living in Ketchikan, Alaska. So she was commuting between Alaska and Seattle, Washington for her treatments. They said that they received, they removed all her lymph nodes, but somehow when she reached Atlanta for to continue her treatment because the commute was becoming taxing, her cancer had spread to her bones as well as her lungs. Um, I was my mother's primary caretaker. I would go to her appointments with her to do radiation as well as chemotherapy. Not in that order though. It was chemo during radiation. But um, November of 2004, the cancer had spread to her brain. My mom passed away on December 21st, 2004. Now, during this time, my mom also had two cousins that were diagnosed with breast cancer. And so it had been going rampant in our family. Um, I met this wonderful woman by the name of Christine who advised me that maybe I should just go ahead and do the genealogy test to see if I had the BRCA gene. And I did, y'all. It came back positive. And that scared the living shit out of me. Christine told me, she said that with the results, she know that I would not act on them right away. And I probably just go home and put them in a draw and just forget about it. She was wrong. I put the results in a shoebox and chucked them under my bed. I needed time to think about it, guys. I needed time to think about it. So, um, also her instructions were for me to um, make an appointment with the breast clinic. So I decided I would stay at the same hospital my mom was um, at, and that would be Emory Winship Cancer Institute. I have a wonderful doctor that was seeing me four times a year I was going to get um, my breast examined by her as well as a mammogram and a ultrasound at the age of 31 no 32 so I just felt like she owed me dinners because I ain't never known nobody. I let fill me up and they don't take me out on no dinner. 
but I did. I used to tell her all the time. So when are we going on our date? Because every time I see you want to touch my titties, y'all find that I am a humorous person. I can have a jokey joke every now and again. But um, she would always recommend double mastectomy, bilateral mastectomy is what it's called. But she would always recommend that for me. And I just didn't feel that was for me. I mean, I had the most prettiest, perkiest titties in the world. Like, why would I let you take one of my best assets? And I don't even have cancer. And that was the way that I looked at this until 2017. Yep, 2017. A lot happened to me <laughs> in 2017. Right at the end of 2016, and I want to say I was 43, I found out that I was pregnant. But unfortunately, the baby was not in the right area. So I met the doctor that I saw today. And she went over my chart. And she read my chart. And she see that I had the gene. Not only is this gene um, hard for a person and you could potentially get breast cancer, but you can also potentially get ovarian cancer so here come this bitch all up in my business right um she told me she said i have to do surgery because the baby is not in the right area and we're gonna have to go ahead and take this baby so i was like okay it's okay so um So, when I woke up from that surgery, she said, Miss Miller, I looked at your chart. I realized that you had the BRCA gene, and that ovary just didn't look good. I recommend that you get the other one out, too. So, she took my ovary. She's supposed to just been in there taking a the damn baby. She took my fucking ovary. But if it didn't look good... And then the pathology report came back benign, no cancer, benign, but she took it. I'm grateful. I am. Trust me, I am. So she said that I want to go ahead and take the other one. I just could not do that without your permission, you think? And I want to set it up so that we can start the process. And this was going to be happening in 2017. Remember I told y'all a lot of shit happened to me in 2017. So, she's a nosy broad. She said, um, before we take out that ovary, I want you to go and do your, you know, your annual stuff. I see you go to the breast clinic. So, I want you to go and do your um, mammogram. I, it was already scheduled but she said i don't want you to just do a mammogram i want you to do a cat scan i go do my cat scan and it come back that i have a mask she scheduled her surgery she take the other ovary and then my breast doctor take my breasts. In October 2017, I had a bilateral mastectomy. When I woke up from that mastectomy and I took those bandages off my breast and looked at this amputation, mutilation, I could not handle it.
Oh my God, guys, I was devastated. It was the worst looking thing I ever saw in my life. They actually amputated my breast. I felt like shit. I, the things that was going through my head was ridiculous. I said that I was no longer a woman. I'm a woman. I'm all woman. I could never be anything but. I'm so girly girl till it's pathetic. But guys, in the same year, they took my ovaries. And they took my titties. I had told my doctor years ago that they couldn't take them because I, they was just pretty. But I told her um, when they found the mask, I would much rather be a girl with fake titties than to be a girl with pretty titties in a casket. And that's the way that I had to convince myself that we were going to get this done. But, y'all, oh my God, I felt like, oh, it was the worst sight that I ever saw. The day when I um had the double or bilateral mastectomy, The anesthesiologist wanted to do an A-line in my arm. I was protesting because I don't do needles. So it's going to be hard to even do an IV. She had to scrap my arm down to do this. And my surgical oncologist, who I've been with since 2006... I can hear her and that woman out in that hallway and she was cussing her out. I had never knew that she could say them type of words, <laughs> but I was pitching a fit. I was crying like a baby and she was cussing her ass out. And I just for the life of me didn't understand. Like I kept saying like, why can't you do this when y'all put me to sleep? But that that it was just a horrible thing and then for me to wake up and see that i was just outdone but at the same time i met my plastic surgeon he was in the operating room with us and he was pre he was prepping me for his part because he had to give me some new girls and I didn't get them right away. I had to end up waiting until Valentine's Day 2018. The very same day I met Sophie. I went for surgery that morning. I had new implants. And Sophie came later that afternoon. And that's why a lot of people don't understand. But Sophie is like... She's my best friend, really. She is my best friend. Sophie was this little. <laughs> and a baby. She was a little bitty puppy. Sophie didn't even weigh a pound. But she was 12 weeks. And she was old enough to leave the litter. And the only thing that me and Sophie did was sleep. Sophie was, she, she was there for me in that healing process and any other healing process that I've experienced because after that surgery, I had two more just to get some titties. So After September last year, I just knew that that was the end. I was not going to be seeing any more surgeons. I wasn't going to be faced with any more breast issues. So I am naturally afraid. But honestly, guys, I have the most high God on my side. And this is nothing 
I know it's only scar tissue, but I still have to go and check it out. I told myself I wasn't gonna have any more surgeries, and it is what it is. But if it, if it could be saved, then I'm gonna have another surgery, y'all. So I said all this to say, today I met two people and I don't know, like we were just sitting there and um, they were talking and I butted in their conversation because I heard the girl saying she want me to have a mammogram, but I don't know. And I just said, like, how old are you? And she said that she was 48. And I said, have you ever had a mammogram? And she said, no. Ladies and men, because men get breast cancer too. But at, when you turn 40 years old, I recommend that you just go ahead and contact your OBGYN or your primary care physician and let them know even if, if they're not recommending it for you that you want to set up an appointment so that you can get your mammogram um black women are one of the highest rate of people to get breast cancer so you all want to stay on top of this i talk to a lot of people that does, they don't do, do self-checks. And I know when I was in school, it was drilled in our heads that we have to do our self-examinations each month. So if you got kids, teenage kids, um, young adults, you need to tell them, you need to show them how to check their self for lumps and be proactive about it because breast cancer took my mom out in a matter of months and this is someone who taught me how to do my own self checks so i know my mom was doing them too and i know my mom got her annuals so it took her out in a matter of months. So I recommend that you all be seen. And I thank you all for listening to this video. Go ahead and hit the like button. Likes help me get recognized on YouTube. And if you're interested in Nosy and want to be involved in my life, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and hit the um, notification bell. That way, when I upload, you'll be the first to know. And I do plan on going live sometimes. So we could just be messy, gossip a little bit. And we could just talk about some stuff. All right, y'all. <laughs> Have a great night. And let me go check on my baby. Because she bad as hell. <laughs>